bow down before the Lord, worship Him.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the worship services for the Southside Church of Christ and beyond. What a beautiful day the Lord has sent our way. We're glad you're here to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We're following our biblical mandate upon the first day of the week. The children of God, the church, the ecclesia, the episcopos is commanded by scripture to gather, to pay homage and prosteneo or worship God. And since we are confined and quarantined by the authorities and our health care officials because of coronavirus 19, we're coming to you in the best way we have available to us right now through Facebook and through our app, church app, through our website, and through YouTube, that we all may be on one accord at the same time, worshiping the same God, because he's been so very good to us. Southside, and even beyond, you may be learning, let's, let's open as we always open. One, two, three. What you see is what you say. What you say is what you sow. What you sow is what you reap. What you reap is what you are. What you are is what you give. What you give is what you get. And what you get is what you deserve. Amen, amen, amen. Beloved, let's be uh, diligent and diligent in prayer for those who are affected by coronavirus. Please pray uh, for those who've been furloughed, those who've been laid off, those who are struggling financially through this crisis that God will rescue them and God will aid and comfort them. We know that some people have even lost loved ones. They had the word that Tanya Young, you know Glover and Tanya Young, Tanya's aunt passed away from coronavirus in New York City. Uh, we remember in our prayers, Dr. Carmine Gibson of the Midtown Church who lost her father uh, through coronavirus. We have several members who've been affected adversely, lost loved ones, like Amanda Baldwin, Adrena Wilson, Clarence Wilson, Johnny Johnson. We're praying for Annette Mitchell and others who've been affected either directly or indirectly by coronavirus. Uh, continue to pray for these individuals and beyond that God will be beneficently kind. Please continue to watch and support our broadcast. I want to uh, encourage you. We need 1,000 subscribers to our YouTube page. We're right at about 400. We need 1,000 people to subscribe to YouTube. Once that happens, that's a threshold that will provide for us to go live in the future. Once we're back in the auditorium, we can uh, broadcast our worship service live. But you need to meet that 1,000 subscriber threshold to open up opportunities for us. I've entered into a covenant with the Southside Church of Christ in Los Angeles, where Dr. Carl Backus is the minister. Uh, I'm going to encourage my members to subscribe to our page and their page, and he has about the same size church, maybe a little larger. He's going to encourage his members to subscribe to their page and our page so both of us can meet that thousand member uh, subscription that will benefit us. So, so, uh, Serena Thompson, uh, Sierra, I'm sorry, your favorite beautiful girl. Sierra Thompson, happy birthday in April. Andrea Thomas, happy birthday in April. Stephanie Tobert had a birthday last week. God bless you. Uh, Jessica McCauley, uh, happy birthday to you. And today, April 26th, what a special day. Deacon Carlos Wade, uh, husband of my trusty assistant, and adopted daughter, Sister Trey Wade. Happy birthday, Deke. And uh, my baby, my boo, my uh, my girl, uh, my only begotten daughter, who I'm well pleased. Today is Brianna Leonard's, I believe it's her 29th birthday. So wish my baby girl a happy birthday along with the others. Great news. Tracy and Janelle had a baby boy. Uh, Daniel and Jenny, beautiful baby girl. So God is blessing us with additions even while we're in quarantine. And uh, pray for them and their uh, children at this time. I remind you, this Wednesday night, 7 p.m., uh, we will have uh, Wednesday night Bible class via Facebook, Southside 
website, Southside, uh, YouTube, and church app. This Wednesday night will be dealing with the fruits of the Spirit, and it will be faith. Oh, my God, you don't want to miss that one. Faith will be our mantra. And greetings again from our elders, Willie Davis and Victor Cromedy, from our deacons, the plethora of deacons, and the membership. Oh, I can't wait until we're back together again. Beloved, let's move expeditiously into the will and the word of God. If you would be so beneficently kind, meet me or beat me to the Old Testament Psalms. Psalms, the 20th division. Our rendezvous point would be verse number 6. Psalms 20 and verse number 6. Psalms 20 and verse number 6. Uh, while you're finding that, I, I know I'm starting to look like a, a brother from the 70s and the 80s with my afro. I'm thinking about getting a jerry curl. My hair is getting so long, but I know y'all talk about Well, y'all talk about me anyway, so I might as well do what I want to do. But anyway, Psalms chapter 20, verse number 6. You'll find these mysterious words. Now know that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear from his holy heaven with saving strength in his hand. The Bible says some, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I want to take my sermonic discipline this morning from the 7th verse of Psalms 20. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. You know what I want to tell you, Southside and beyond? In times like these, remember the Lord. In times like these, remember the Lord. Our beloved King David is our author. The one time smelly, ready shepherd boy. The one time uh, slayer of the giant Goliath. This son of Jesse and father of Solomon has a unique place in the archives of the scriptures. In this interrogative psalm, Psalms 20, that really segues into Psalms 23. You read it in the personal privacy of your own praying ground. In the Genesis of this chapter, verse 1, David says, the Lord hears us in our day of trouble. And he said, in these turbulent times, David said then, and it's certainly applicable now, David said, in times of danger, in times of difficulty and dilemma, in times of dire straits, in times of anxiety, grief, pain, in time of vexing, when we're struggling and suffering and stressful, in times and seasons of unrest, yes, in cataclysmic calamity and in tempestuous trials, David says, some people trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But we, the people of God, the called out, the saved, the sanctified, the born again, the members of the blood-bought, heaven-bound, Christ-centered, hell-proof church, the church of Christ, we, in times of crisis, don't trust horses and chariots. David says, we will remember the Lord our God. And I want to tell you today, Southside of Mignon, in times like these, what we need to do is follow this blueprint, this schematic diagram that David left in the long ago. David says we should trust and we should remember the Lord our God. You see, if you trust things, if you trust stuff, you're going to have some difficulty getting through your crisis. David draws a parallel, an allegory, analogy. He uses horses and chariots because that was certainly the jargon 
uh, and the lexicon of that day. If David was speaking today, he'd say, some trust in their 401k. If he was speaking today, he'd say, some trust in their stimulus check they just received from the government. Some people trust in their social security. Some people trust in their education. Others trust in their social strata or social contract. Some trust in their spouse or their children. Some trust in their job, their finances, and their romance. David says that in times like these, we should remember the Lord our God. You see, in times like these, it teaches you what's important. It teaches you what should be in the frontness of your mind and not in your subconscious mind. You see, these times have taught us to remember the Lord. They've taught us how important family really is because now we're forced to be around family so much more than we used to be. And I find it very invigorating. It's a helpful reminder as I spent my life just like you going here and there and there and here and we're almost meeting and greeting each other passing and just speaking almost uh like roommates but now we've been forced to get together be together have meals together talk more watch tv and movies pray together read the bible together discuss things together god is a good god sometimes in troubled times, you find out what's really important in your life. We've been forced to pray more, as I talked about last week. We've really now been uh, directed to the epicenter of the human existence. That is family, God, prayer, church. Those are the essence of life. You see, beloved, I hope, trust, and pray that you're using this as we're trying to use this as a teachable moment with our children and our grandchildren. Remember, the wise man said, Solomon in Ecclesiastes 12 and 1, Solomon says that remember thy creator in the days of thy youth, before the evil days arrive and before the years have consumed you. Use this opportunity right now to teach your children through coronavirus and this abnormality that all of us are suffering, that they're home from school and you are home from work and society has been shut down. Now this is a teachable moment to remind your children that we remember God. In these times, put them in front of the screen every Sunday. Put them in front of the screen every Wednesday night. Let them watch their preacher talk about in times like these, we pray. In times like these, we remember the Lord our God. You lead them in prayer. You lead them in Bible study. Take advantage of these times to get yourself and your family a little bit closer to God. There are things we need to remember, church, but there are also some things we need to forget. We tend to remember the things we ought to forget. We tend to forget the things we ought to remember. Don't dwell on the negatives in life. Look and dwell on the positives in life. I was reading the other day because of this anxious time we live, because of these turbulent times uh, that many are suffering what we call insomnia. That's when you are bored and destitute of sleep. Or if you go to sleep, you tend to wake up. I read the other day that three out of 10 people in America suffer from insomnia. It's a hundred and hundreds of millions of dollar business in America trying to treat people with insomnia. They got pills and prescriptions and medication. They even have devices they have uh, developed to try to help people deal with insomnia. I read the other day that if you, some of the things they recommend, turn off your television, your LCD screen, because that light would keep you up and certainly keep you from falling in the REM sleep. I read that you shouldn't drink coffee, particularly at night. The caffeine would tend to keep you awake. I'm not one of those people. I don't care. When I'm sleepy, I could eat, drink uh, coffee all day, but if I'm sleepy, I'm going to sleep. But but it's recommended that caffeine will keep you away. It's also said that you don't eat certain foods, or certain foods you should avoid rather, and certain foods you should consume to battle insomnia. 
Uh, it's even recommended in some quarters. Most of y'all are like this one. Get you a glass of wine at night. That'll help you sleep. Now, nobody had to tell you that. You were already on that tip. And then there's another recommendation that says, just stand up. Stand up till you get sleepy. I thought that was pretty comical. Uh, but I want to give you some free advice. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. But I do know the Bible. If you really want to sleep at night, if you really want to go into the abyss of unconsciousness and not only sleep, but find rest, when you can't sleep or you're fighting insomnia, remember God. Just start taking a nostalgic stroll in memory through his will and his word. I guarantee you, it'll help you to sleep. Uh, beloved, sometimes when I'm feeling like things are troubling me and I'm, I'm void and, uh, for reason and rhyme, <clears throat> I start just remembering uh, the sovereignty of God, how God has intervened from the beginning. And if God got us out of that, then God can get us out of this. You got to always let your that help you with your this. If you got out of that, then you can get out of this. Don't ever let your this over trump your that. Your that can help you deal with your this. Just start remembering. If you, you want to help you, let me just start remembering. Before there was a when and a where, before there was a then and a there, it was God who stepped out on the platform of nothing, reached back into nowhere, got nothing, threw it out into nowhere, and nowhere became somewhere in the hands of God. It was God who was behind the curtain of nowhere, stepped out and made nothing something. It was God. God who caught the oceans in the hem of his garment. It was God who scooped out the valleys, piled up the mountains, threaded the earth with rivers, lakes, and streams. It was God who stretched the sky out like a curtain, pinned it up with diamond-studded stars, painted the sky uh, blue and the clouds white. He didn't even need a brush, a stool, or a ladder. Sometimes in life, you just ought to start remembering God, who he is and what he's doing. It was God who uh, made a way out of no way all throughout the Bible and all throughout your life and mine. You remember when Israel was trapped in that spiritual cul-de-sac at the Red Sea, 12 miles of water in front of them, Pharaoh's army behind them, uh, mountains on each side of them, and God parted the Red Sea so they could walk across on dry ground. Well, maybe today you feel like you're in a spiritual cul-de-sac, bill collectors in front of you. You got, you, you got, you got uh, trouble and, and 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 a bad employer behind you. You got you got you got menaces on the right side, coronavirus on the left side. Now you need God to intervene. Just remember, in times like this, the God who has delivered us in the past is the God who can deliver us today. You dealing with this some year? Just remember the twenty third Psalm: The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I remember my grandson. I think I shared with y'all before when he was two or three years old and I was going through the Bible with him and reading the 23rd Psalms. And I said, Kylan, the Lord is our shepherd. I shall not want. And Kylan could remember that whole verse. Kylan said, the Lord is my shepherd. That's all I want. I think Kylan is right. The Lord is our shepherd, and that's all we need, and that should be all we want. If you can't sleep, remember what the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. If you can't sleep at night, remember the psalm that said, God is my rock. God is my shield. God is my wheel in the middle of the wheel. If you can't sleep at night, remember God is our battle axe in the time of battle. He's our shelter in the time of a storm. Remember, he's a way maker. Just remember, he's a miracle worker. Remember, he's a promise keeper in the light and the darkness. Remember, he's a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. Remember, he's a burden bearer and a heavy load sharer. Just remember, he's our leaning post and our bridge 
over troubled water. In times like these, we need to remember our Lord, our God. Well, if that didn't do it, remember the birth of Jesus. Remember how he came down from uh, heavens uh, and came to this sin-cursed earth by the process of a virgin birth. Born in Bethlehem of Judea, wrapped in swaddling cloth, laid in a horse stable, raised in ancient Palestine, 33 and a half years, died on a cross, shed his blood for the sins of humanity. Remember, he was nailed and crucified, but early Sunday morning, he got up. And don't remember he just got up. Just remember God raised him up with all power in his hand. You see, beloved, in times like these, instead of dwelling what's wrong and what's plaguing us, we should remember the sovereignty and the goodness of God, how he who has intervened and delivered us in the past shall not forsake us even on today. What I find happening with a lot of people, even before Corona, and I'm sure it happened after Corona, see, people are not satisfied. They're not content. The economy was blo uh, blooming, blustery, and all of us were doing a little bit better economically. But what you find out is things and stuff don't satisfy you. The psalm that said in Psalm 63 and verse 5, my soul is satisfied in the Lord. I've never seen a day when people are so blessed and so unsatisfied. Today, people are so restless. They're so tired. They're so weary. They they're mad all the time, uh, contentious. Uh, in the words of that famed uh, civil rights leader from Mississippi in the late 1960s, Fannie Lou Hamer, as she addressed the Democratic National Convention, she said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. People today are angry, they're moody, they're on edge. Some are even postal. Uh, it is not because you're not a Christian. Uh, you are a Christian. You are saved. But that really intensifies your dissatisfaction. Because what happens is, when you're a Christian, you're a child of God, you're a member of the body of Christ, and you try to satisfy your dissatisfaction with things that don't satisfy. So, beloved, here's what happens to us as Christians. Let me, let me help you with that. Once you taste it, it's just like any other addiction. Once you taste it, the grace, the mercy, the love, the forgiveness, and the salvation of God, nothing else will satisfy you but God. It's just how drug addiction works. You see, it's how alcoholism works. It's like how any other abusive uh, behavior works. It's how promiscuity works. You see, you can't drink enough. You can't smoke enough. You can't sex enough. You can't buy enough. You can't have enough to satisfy you. And the more you get of those things, the more you want of those things, and the more it takes of those things. You see, beloved, you keep wanting to get higher and higher when you engage in addictive behavior. Uh, the more you crave, the more you want. The higher you get, the more high you want to get. I'm talking about addictions in life. But God is the only thing and the only person in life that the more you crave, you should never get enough of. Only God satisfies us. We've been looking for satisfaction and contentment in the wrong places. You see, only God satisfies. Things we have pacify, but only God satisfies. You do know what a pacifier. A pacifier is something you give a baby, but it has no milk, it has no juice, it has no water, it has no substance. It's a substitute. It's a temporary fix. It's a sugar high. Uh, it's a pacifier. No, beloved, in life, I'm not looking for a pacifier. I found me a satisfier. I found the Savior, he's sweet, I know. Storm winds may rise and storm winds may blow. I tell a dying world wherever I may go. I found me a Savior, and he's sweet, I know. You see, jobs don't satisfy. Money don't satisfy. Spouses don't satisfy. 
Children don't satisfy. Money can't satisfy. Parents can't satisfy. Houses don't satisfy. Cars. David talked about ch chariots and horses. Some trust in them. But cars don't satisfy. Clothes don't satisfy. Shoes don't satisfy. Well, Brother Leonard, I got me not only shoes, man, I got stilettos. Matter of fact, I got a pair of red bottom shoes. Honey girl, sister child, sister do funny, that still won't satisfy. Land don't satisfy. Possessions don't satisfy. That's why you have to learn now. We got a million dollar plus building, but it's not the building that makes us Christian because the building don't satisfy. Things don't satisfy. Stuff don't satisfy. You got to have God way down on the inside for you to have true contentment and true satisfaction. That's why in times like these, we need to remember the Lord, our God. Beloved, it's good to have stuff. It's good to use stuff, but it does not satisfy. The record is complete. There are a lot of people who got a lot of money and a lot of things, and they're jumping off bridges, they're overdosing on pills, they committed suicide even at higher rates. Beloved, God made us for himself, and there's a part of God he put in us when he made us, and that's why we're never satisfied totally satisfied or content, or content until we back in our covenant relationship with the Lord our God. You see, there are a lot of things that can help you go to sleep, but only God can wake you up. I came by to tell you, like David said, I parrot the words of David. In times like these, some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we would trust and remember the Lord, our God. That's why you don't turn your back on the church. I, I'm hoping this crisis, like most crises, turn people's thoughts right to God. And I know some of you have fallen out with church. You, you found a few hypocrites at church. You find some inauthentic people at church. You found some hell raisers at church. They're everywhere. You can't, you can't, there's they, they, some hypocrites at your job. You ain't quit your job. There's hypocrites in your fraternity. You ain't quit the bros. There's some hypocrites in your sororities. You still call them sororities. There's some hypocrites at the doctor's office at Walmart. Everywhere you go, there's hypocrites. So why are you going to turn your back on the church? It really uh, uh, bewilders me. Uh, I, I tell people, you can find everything you're looking for at church. You, you can remember the Lord God. You can find, Look, I heard a member tell me, Brother Lynn, I, I'm forgiven. I just like go to the com comedy club. I love comedy. I like to watch it on TV. And when the comments come to town, I go to the comedy club. I said, girl, just come by the Southside Church. You want to laugh? Man, Christians are a trip. You want to see something to laugh at? People laugh at me all the time. People laugh at what I say, what I do, what I don't do. If you want to laugh, come to the church. And I got to, when you're laughing at people, be careful while you're laughing while you're young. When you get old, you'll find yourself acting and saying the same thing you used to laugh at people for acting and saying. I used to laugh at the old songs the old folks said. I laughed at the old sayings they said. Uh, got a reasonable portion of my health insurance. Now I got a certain age, I am find myself mimicking and becoming what I used to laugh at. You want to laugh? Come to church. If you oh, Berlin, I, I like to go to the club, the nightclub. Well, kind of child, brother, wonderful. Don't go to the nightclub. Come over here to the light club. You know, well, Berlin, what you don't understand is, man, there's some fly girls and fly women at the nightclub. If you come to the church, there's some beautiful women at the light club. Now, just remember, the most beautiful one is Sister Pam Leonard. That's mine. Don't put your hands or your eyes on that one. But you can find a good-looking woman or a good-looking man at the light club. You don't have to go to the night club. Brother Leonard, I, I confess, I like, I like a little buzz. I like to get high. I like to feel good. If you want to feel good, you want to get high, you want to get way up in the strata, come to the church. Man, there's a high you don't have to buy at the church. You just come. It's free. Man, everybody looking for a free high. The Spirit of God can get you higher than you ever been, keep you longer than you plan to stay, and sustain you through difficult times. Whatever you need you've been looking for in the world, God has abundance of that same thing even in the church. 
I was telling some of my brothers, I teased them with, I said, coronavirus came out. Some of y'all been dealing with corona a long time. Not coronavirus, but corona with a lime or lemon in the bottle. I'm here to tell you today, beloved, all those things may pacify us. But only a covenant relationship with God can satisfy us. Beloved, as I prepare to sneak to my seat metaphorically, I'm reminded of this this plant that grows in northern Mexico is commonly known as the resurrection plant. It has several descriptive names, but some call it the resurrection plant. And it reminds me of the situation we're in right now in America and indeed the world due to this pandemic. And uh, uh, the lore of this planet, uh, plant is it's an ugly plant. It's uh has no aesthetic beauty whatsoever. It's brown, it's ugly, it's dry, it's barren, it's sullen. And uh, it's not the kind of plant you would present to your boo, your sugar, your strawberry, uh, your pie, your sugar. Uh, you, you wouldn't, you wanna give this to your loved one. It's an ugly, undesirable plant. Uh, it's two to three percent water in this plant. It's ugly. It has very short roots in this plant. And it's called the resurrection plant because it can stay in this dry and barren condition. Ugly brown, looks like dried out tobacco. Nothing beautiful about it. It can stay in that state for two or three years. And you can take one cup of water and pour it on this plant and in one hour, it will bloom and blossom into a beautiful, viable plant. Y'all didn't get what I'm trying to tell you. We can be in a dry, barren, sullen, destitute, ugly place for as long as this virus keeps us. But if we remember and never forget in times like these to remember God, one taste, one pour of God's glory and mercy, and instantaneously we can bloom and blossom back to what God would have us to be. See, beloved, this is no time for you to trust in your money, trust in your riches, trust in your bank account, trust in your spouse. This is no time to trust in your education. So time to trust in what you live and what you drive. It's time to trust God. It reminds me of the story of a man who got on an airplane. And uh, he thought well of himself. And the stewardess was giving instructions to put your seatbelt on. And uh, after they gave all the instructions, they were taxing back from uh, the terminal. And uh, the stewardess noticed that he didn't have his seatbelt on. She said, hey, sir. Put, put, put your seatbelt on. You got to have your seatbelt on. He said, ma'am, I'm Superman. I don't need a seatbelt. She looked at him and said, if you were Superman, you wouldn't need a plane. And so what I'm trying to tell you, beloved, today, I don't care how strong you are, how, how big and bad you think you are, you still need God. No matter how well you think of yourself, no matter how well you've done, in times like these, as David said in the Psalms 20, in verse 7, some trust in horses, some trust in chariots. But we, talking about you and I, children of God, we will remember the Lord our God. So let it be written, so let it be done. The grass withers, the flower fadeth away, but the words of our God shall stand forever. And I was always closed by saying, O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Beloved, let's now move expeditiously into another facet and phase of New Testament worship. You have to have five components to for this worship to be acceptable according to the scriptures uh, in the eyesight of God. We've already had melodious song, a cappella singing. We've had a word from God. We shall commune together. We will pray together. We will give together. We will fulfill all the edicts that God has commanded. Now it's come time for communion. We trust and pray that you have secured a communion pack that contains unleavened bread and some fruit of the vine. Beloved, we still remind you, if you need to come by the church and pick up a disposable communion package, we have a plethora. Deacon Benjamin ordered even more. So we have an abundance here that you can pick up 
from the church. But if you so desire, it may be even preferable to go by and buy you some grape juice and go to the ethnic aisle of your local local grocery store and buy some other bread and you can partake of the Lord's Supper. We command in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 upon the first day of the week to commemorate, remember the, the suffering, horrific price that Jesus paid on Calvary for the sins of humanity that we could enjoy and partake of the tree of life. Let us pray about the communion. Our Father, our God, we are thankful for this day and all of your blessings. We're thankful for this opportunity we've had together to share your word. We Thankful for praying together and singing together and worshiping together in spirit and in truth. Bless those who are less fortunate, the misfortunate, the doomed, the damned, the destitute, and the bereaved, whoever and wherever, wherever they may be. We pray for quick and expeditious relief from coronavirus so that we can return to normalcy as soon as possible. Oh God, now as we prepare to take up, prepare to take up this bread and this cup, help us to remember. In times like these, remember the Lord our God and what Jesus did on the cross for us for the remission of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, beloved, we partake of the oven from bread. Mm. Take of the fruit of the vine. Now, beloved, it's the happiest time of our worship. I know you've been waiting on this one. Oh, I've been waiting. I can't wait to show God how much I appreciate the abundance and the bountiful way he blesses me and my family. It's commanded by God, not by Brother Leonard, not by preachers. It's commanded by God that you share a significant portion of what you earn with him and his kingdom. Uh, your tithes, your offering, the first fruit of your increase. When God blesses you, you ought to bless him so he can bless you. And then when he blesses you, you bless him so he can bless you, so you can bless him, so he can bless you. It's an inexhaustible merry-go-round of blessing. If you look at your screen right now, you'll see three ways that we have the Southside Church of Christ and beyond that you can keep your commitment to God. Uh, the Giveify app, by far our most popular use it it's safe and secure we also have uh, the cash app you can see how to log on and give your money to cash app or you can use paypal at Southside. all three are very secure but whatever it takes for you to give do so even at this hour for those who still write checks or have cash we are at the building i'm there one of the leaders is there 11 a.m to 2 p.m monday through friday to pass out communion cups and to receive lay-by and to do mobile prayer for members who so desire. Uh, I have also remind members that because of technology, thank God, I've been able to counsel some people via Zoom and other apps that allow us to see each other, talk together about your concentric concerns that's even available to you even as we speak. So drop your lay-by off if you have it. Uh, Sunday mornings, we're there from 9 a.m. <clears throat> to 10.30. We give everybody time to get home by 11 o'clock to premiere the new broadcast. Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. to 10.30. Monday through Friday, we're there at 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. God bless you and God keep you. This is our prayer. Stay diligent. Stay focused. Uh, be well. Be safe. Check on one another. Love one another. Care for one another. For this is the will and the word of God concerning you. Always remember and never forget, in times like these, remember the Lord our God. Be blessed. Without you, Lord, mm -hmm, yes, without you, Lord.
Yeah,